Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Dr. Hunter, uh, would you consider the gun violence in our country a national health issue? Absolutely, it is a, is a public national health issue. Public health issue. And therefore, as a public health issue, shouldn't we be able to uh, have a lot more information about the incidence of gun violence and, and perhaps why uh, black women, for example, would go out and buy guns in this environment? Absolutely. You Evidence-based public health approaches to solving problems is something that is essential. We have seen it with motor vehicle accidents. We have seen it in approaching the HIV AIDS epidemic. And meaningful solutions to include legislation as well as you know, public investiture in private companies to make better decisions as well as informing consumers to make better decisions comes from <clears throat> transparent data. And right now, as, as researchers, we don't have that data to give you the best information possible to make the laws a comprehensive set of laws that are going to keep us safe. I agree with you. And uh, as uh, our colleague testified, that gun death is the uh, highest cause of death for young people in our country. And you would think that we would want to uh, better understand the causalities and what we can do. Uh, Professor Blocker, is that how you Bloker. pronounce your name? Blocker, sorry. So after Bruin, uh, I would say that there's going to be a lot of uh, there are a lot of questions about various state laws that may fit within the uh, Bruin kind of a situation, including, by the way, Hawaii. I don't know if you're f familiar with the fact that Hawaii has some of the strictest gun laws in the country and uh, probably the lowest gun violence rate in our country. And already after Bruin, the Supreme Court has already sent a case challenging Hawaii's laws back to the Ninth Circuit for a new ruling. So after brewing, would you expect a lot more challenges to uh, state laws such as uh, in Hawaii's, Hawaii's case? And what does that do for states' efforts to lower gun violence in their states? Thank you for the question, Senator. Uh, not only would I expect it, I think we've already seen it, um, cases that have been sent back down for further consideration in light of historical record, issues which we thought to be resolved by prior Second Amendment cases, including the constitutionality of prohibitions like Highland Park's municipal uh, assault weapons ban, I think absolutely will be relitigated. My hope uh, and expectation is that judges will recognize what then Judge Amy Coney Barrett wrote in a dissenting opinion when she was on the Seventh Circuit, which is that history is consistent with common sense and the framing generation understood that dangerous persons could be disarmed. Likewise, they understood that dangerous and unusual weapons could be prohibited. And so I hope that the jurisprudence continues to reflect that fact. Well, um, after Bruin, do, do you think that the Supreme Court will sustain a national ban on assault weapons? Uh, no, uh, do you think that this court would support a state's ban on assault weapons? And what about bans on large capacity um, magazines? Do you think that the Supreme Court will sustain such bans at either the national or state levels? One of the difficult things about answering the question is the degree to which Bruin has introduced uncertainty, but here's how I would think it through. The big, um, uh, in the lead up to Bruin, anyway, such laws had fared extremely well in Second Amendment litigation, so there is a jurisprudence that already exists. Courts upheld these laws under a variety of different rationales, some concluding that those weapons are dangerous and unusual and therefore fall outside the scope of the Second Amendment, some courts concluding that the government had a sufficient interest and that these laws are sufficiently tailored to that interest. Some of those certainly will be relitigated. Here Here's, uh, I think, three factors at least we could consider uh, in predicting the Supreme Court's response. One is that the court has again affirmed that dangerous and unusual weapons can be prohibited. And in Heller, an, an opinion by Justice Scalia, the court equated dangerous and unusual weapons with M16s and the like. And for all the reasons you've heard today, AR-15s and M16s are different, but they are similar, and the and the like may include AR-15s as well. Um, there's an argument that these weapons are in common use. The National Shooting Sports Foundation often points to the fact that 20 million of them have been sold in the past few decades. I have no reason to doubt the accuracy of that number, but I would say that 20 million um, assault weapons in circulation in the past few decades does not mean 20 million assault weapons owners. That ownership is probably concentrated in a much smaller proportion of gun owners who themselves are a minority of the American population. So we're maybe talking about 
maybe four or five million Americans out of 300, and, uh, 300 plus million. Also, 20 million weapons is only 5% of the, of the, of, of the uh, civilian weapons stock. I'm not sure that constitutes common or not. What I would really want to know to be able to evaluate the question, what I hope the Supreme Court would ask in light of Bruin, which directs us to consider the burdens on self-defense, is how often are these weapons used in self-defense in comparison to their use in gun massacres and mass shootings? Um, we heard today an earlier example where one was but when Maryland's prohibition on assault weapons was challenged, neither the challengers nor law enforcement could point to a single example of a Marylander using an assault weapon for self-defense. Um, and if that's the case, and if we take the industry and Justice Thomas, for that matter, um, uh, uh, at, at their word that these are modern sporting rifles, then I think they're two times removed from the historical interest in self-defense. Well, the thing is, the Supreme Court is not asking the, the question of whether or not or how often these kinds of assault weapons, uh, however way we describe them, uh, are used in self-defense. See, that is not the question they're asking. They're asking whether it's dangerous and unusual. When you have 20 million of these kinds of, of items in our uh, environment, that's not particularly un unusual. That's why this is a Supreme Court that is moving us toward enabling more and more people to own all kinds of guns. And we are already awash in guns in our country. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Hirono. Senator Cloak.